Right folks, I am back with a, another for fox sake. Um, I did one yesterday on the way home when I was coming home on the slab. Um, but I didn't really get to say what I wanted to completely say. I just wanted to get a for fox sake in because I was quite happy. For some reason I had been, I was happy. I had been sitting next to Rory and he was talking... And talking... And talking... And then he still carried on talking, <laughs> full of excuses. Well done Leicester City team, superb. The staff, the chairman, the manager, uh, the fans down there, well done to you all. Congratulations. Um, so I just wanted to do a, another for Fox sake. Um, because I just wanted to say a few extra things than I didn't say on the motorway. Um, first of all, I want to start off with the owners. Oh, for fuck's sake, I've got a bloody wasp in here now. Bugger off. <sighs> bloody wasps. Who are wasps, anyway? Well, oh, they're a rugby team. Um, I just want to say, the owners, absolutely brilliant, right? I've had so many messages on Twitter, and I haven't been on Instagram, uh, on YouTube, saying how they wish their club had owners like Leicester City. Um, it's, it's, it should be noted that to, to teams like, well not teams, because that's an insult to the actual teams itself, but to owners like the Glaziers, the Cronky Bastards, uh, Roman, Levy and Ashley, and the other ones that just, Take a club and just try to milk it as much as they can. If you get the fans on side, right, they will stand by you. And what the owners have done, Top, after his father died, Vichai died, he's taken over the reins and he's carried on building the dream that his father had. Apparently, from what I hear, uh, the first match he actually watched was when Leicester City beat Borough in the final in 97. I was there for both games with a lad called Nick Ainley. Um, he owned Ainley's records in Leicester, or rather his dad did. And we went up there with a few of the other lads and we had a magnificent night. Uh, absolutely brilliant. And to realise that he was there watching the game and that's where he first uh, watched Leicester City he's part of it, you know what I mean? It's, it just feels a little bit more special. When that goal went in, me and Nick nearly fell down the top of that fucking main stand. Jesus. God, how we didn't fall down there, I do not know. But we were jumping around and everything. Um, and he bought Leicester in 2010 off Milan Mandrick. And I'll tell you what, Milan Mandrick has to take some of the credit for this because he did actually take some pride and care in who he sold the club to. Uh, so fair play to him. And then as the club has developed even more, um, we've got to where we are, you know, in the in the beginning it was a little bit rough, um, finding the right manager, Sven, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, who it? Sol, not Sowell. I can't remember his fucking name, because that's how significant he was. And then we've got Pearson back, and then it just carries on, doesn't it? But it's just, it's not just that as well. He gives people a chance, and... He supports the club, and now many a time um, they've gave away a pie and pints and scarves and beanie hats, and they've given thousands and thousands of pounds to charities and the, the cancer ward in Leicester Royal. You know, and there's not many who actually do that. They do actually take a pride in the city itself. So fair play to the owners, and I think. When Leicester lifted the trophy at the end of the game, it showed that because Schmeichel went and got him top. He dragged, well, he didn't drag him, did he? But he, you know, he escorted him out onto the pitch and he lifted the cup. And it was a great thing. I mean, Adam McCauley, when I was sat on the kickoff, he said, I hope he doesn't lift the trophy. And I, I can understand what Adam's saying. And fair play to him, he was dead right. Um, but he was there in the end, and he was there lifting the trophy, and he was looking up at the sky and pointing to the sky for his dad. And it was quite an emotional thing. And I honestly couldn't see any Manchester United fans winning the FA Cup, or the League Cup, or the Premier League, or anything, 
and wanting the Glaziers to be there, part of it, lifting the trophy with the players and the management staff. I just can't see it. I can't see Spurs wanting Levy or Newcastle surviving and having Fat Ashley on the fucking pitch celebrating. I can't see Arsenal wanting the Cronky bastard there. I just cannot see it wanting them, the, 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 the fans wanting them to do that. Yet, it seems that countrywide, neutral fans have accepted top celebrating with the players because of what he's done for the club. Him and his father had a dream and they've they've done it. They've won the Premier League and the FA Cup. And hopefully now they'll go on to do even better things at Leicester. Brendan Rodgers' relationship with Top is special. And hopefully we can build on this silverware that they've won. Leicester are not a big bragging club. They take care and they take pride in what they do. They won't be ripped off. If you want to spend 80 million for Harry Maguire, you will spend 80 million if you want him. And it'll go for any other player. There is a price. Leicester are no longer a bullied, bullied club. You will not take the piss out of Leicester. They will take the fucking piss out of you. Because they will take... FA Cups and Premier Leagues and build on this success if, if clubs want our players they're going to have to pay a premium price Ben Chilwell never worth 50 million quid Harry Maguire never worth fucking 80 million never but they've done it they've done it I'm just going to turn my tablet back on so I can read my script Read my notes. But, yeah. Rogers and Top have got a special relationship. And team, and it's like you get sly sports news. And they seem to think they can tempt stories where they could get Rogers to go to Spurs. I don't think it's going to happen. Because I don't think that the relationship Top and Brendan have got can be broken by somebody... Daniel Levy? Daniel Levy? Is that his name? I don't think that Brendan could work with another chairman or owner as well as he, do with, as, as well as he does with Top. I think one day he might, he might consider it when he's been at Leicester for so many years and he feels that he's done all he can. But while he's there at the moment, he's building, he's building. We've got youngsters coming through. Thomas, what a player he is. Harvey Barnes, he would have played today, yesterday. Justin, he would have played. We've got players coming through all the time. Madison, if Madison, right, I've had some abuse on Twitter. Because when Leicester scored, I, my first reaction was to have a go at Madison. But no, my, my first reaction wasn't to have a go at Madison. My first reaction was to com compliment Tillemans. Tillemans is an exceptional player. And we've got him. £100 million in my book. I've got a book now. £100 million. I'll write in that book for Tillemans. You want him. £100 million. That bloke is the heartbeat of Leicester City. But moving on. We talk of the big six. Why aren't Leicester in the big six? Leicester are going to get there. Spurs haven't won a trophy. They've probably won one trophy for 25 years or something. I, I don't understand. They've got a big ground. What well, fucking good's a ground if you've got no trophies in the cabinet? And that's all to do with respect to Spurs. But when all, all <laughs> respect is earned... Leicester have come in and taken this by storm. They've won the Premier League on a fucking shoestring budget. They've beat Manchester United to get to the final. They've beat Premier teams to get to the semi to the final. And then they've beat Chelsea. Now, you can moan that the VAR won Chelsea the, the, the uh, won Leicester the cup. But no, it didn't. Chelsea weren't good enough. 
and there's a fly in this fucking kitchen. Chelsea weren't good enough, and that's all there is to it. I'm going to start this again. Chelsea weren't good enough. You can blame VAR, you can say, oh, it hit his hand, you can hit the ball at Perez's arm when he blocked. To be fair, Leicester deserve a goal because it was a shit fucking ball from James. It, it, Chelsea p just put a shit ball out and he, he intercepted it. Granted, it hit his arm, but it, it bounced off his knee. Now, you shouldn't be moaning about the VAR on the fucking hand ball. What you should be doing is moaning about the fucking shit pass from the Chelsea player. That's what you should be doing. You should be pointing fingers. You shouldn't have even got to that stage where the ball was that shit. You should be moaning that the Chelsea defenders didn't uh, didn't shut Tillemans down. You shouldn't be moaning at VAR. You want to have a look at your fucking selves, lads. Do you know what I mean? But going back to the way um, the Rodgers and the top connection is going. Silverware will attract players. Leicester have already made a couple of signings in the, in the, close, uh, in the end of the season. We've got players coming. Silverware will attract players. The way Leicester are set up will attract players. We've got the new training ground, right? It's a second to non training ground, right? Where Manu, where do Manu, Carrow Road or Carrington, whatever the fucking hell it is. Spurs have got a new one. Leicester's is apparently the best in Europe. Yeah, it's the best in Europe. So they say, so people say. I've drove by it. You see it on the hill as you drive by. It's fucking tremendous. Yeah, we're, at, we're looking to extend the ground. We're gonna have a new stand put on top of the ground as it is. Leicester are going places. We're not fucking hanging around at the back. We're not fucking pissing about here now. Leicester have got plans. You talk of the big six, you fucking watch out. Leicester are coming. We've got youngsters coming through, like I've already mentioned, Harvey Barnes, Justin, Thomas. We've got, to, we've got lads coming through. And they will be given the chance to prove themselves. Leicester ain't going to have to go out and buy fucking players. We, you know, we're going to have to spend millions of pounds on players. They're coming. They're coming through the youth team. We've got a recruitment system. Where they are, <laughs> Mares. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, if teams want him, they've got, if teams want them, they're going to have to pay fucking big money for them. Leicester wanted this trophy today. Or yesterday. They wanted it for the owner. And his father. And that's all there is to it. Chelsea just didn't fucking turn up. They thought they'd won their final against Man City. Well, yeah, they did. Well done, fucking done. Well fucking done, you've won a semi-final. You haven't won a final. That's two years in a row now, you haven't won a final. And the pressure's on Chelsea now to win the fucking Champions League. There you go. Thomas Tuchel put it down to bad luck. Bollocks. Bollocks, mate. You should be saying that we didn't turn up. We were poor. Rory Jennings sat next to me. He was going fucking mad, that lad were. Rory, I know he gets some comments on the kickoff, but Rory fucking got a passion for Chelsea. And if half them Chelsea players played with the passion that Rory had, they might have fucking done it. They might have won, but they didn't have any passion. They thought they were just gonna fucking roll us over. And you didn't, they didn't, they didn't fucking Chelsea didn't turn up. Leicester had one shot on target, one fucking goal. Chelsea had a couple, just fucking weren't good enough. And I do feel sorry for Chelsea fans because the team just didn't turn up. Just honestly didn't turn up. And to put it down as bad luck is quite insulting to Chelsea fans. He should have been just saying, we didn't turn up, we let you down. We let you down, but we'll put it right. We'll put it right in the semi. We'll put it right in the Champions League final. We'll make it up to you. I don't think they can. There's one report of um, Daniel Amitri. He threw the uh, Chelsea pennant, and they were saying on the uh, Talk Sport that uh, that should incite, that should give Chelsea the 
the need to beat us on Tuesday night. If you need another player throwing a pennant across the changing room, the incentive to beat you, then you shouldn't be fucking playing football. What kind of fucking talk is that? You should, you should be going out there to win every game. You've got, Chelsea have got fans who would die for their club. They would give anything to play for their club. Yet you have players on hundreds of thousands of pounds a week and you're saying that another player throwing a pennant across the changing room should be the incentive to fucking make you beat them. Really? What fucking kind of talk's that? Maybe you should get some kind of camaraderie together with your mates, your team play, your teammates and your players, and think, let's just do this. I've always said that, like, if you lose, I don't like losing, I hate losing, but if you lose, but you put the effort in, and the fans can see you've put the effort in, then fair enough, they'll stand by you. I can't see any Chelsea fans standing by Tot uh, but Tottenham. Sorry, I do apologise. Uh, I can't see any Chelsea fans standing by Tottenham. Uh, I fucking said it again. Spurs, it oh, for fuck's sake. I can't see any Chelsea fans standing by Chelsea after that performance and to turn around and say it was bad luck. It's unbelievable. Moving on now to um, Tillemans. I gave Tillemans a bit of stick last season because I didn't think he was up for it. I thought his first season here on loan was outstanding. I thought last season, I didn't think he was that good. But when you go back and actually watch Tillemans play, he sees the game in a different light. He sees the game, I've said this before, but you've seen the Sherlock Holmes films and the TV programme and how it does the bit in his mind where he can see everything happening. And that's how Tillemans is. Tillemans can see things that other players can't see. And his ball distribution skills is second to not. He's, he's just outstanding. And I'm so, so pleased we have him at uh, the King Power. And I would absolutely love to meet him and shake his hand and say thank you for what you have done for Leicester City. The balls that he plays, he can split defences open. And it's not that... The, the thing is with him, if it doesn't work, if it gets intercepted, it doesn't bring him down. He will still continue to try the flick over, the through ball. He'll split... He'll, he can just do things. It, the, and the, the thing is, it, people bang on about Madison because Madison looks the part. But Tillemans is the part. Tillemans is outstanding. And I do worry that one day somebody might come and take him. But once again, I would price him well over 100, over 100 million. Because he is just outstanding. Right, Madison has the talent... But has he got the attitude? I've been criticised for calling Madison. And Madison is a hell of a talent. But he needs to have the attitude. He needs to have the winning, willing, winning mentality to take his talent to the next level. South, Southgate's seen it. Southgate sent him home. And Rodgers is seen it now. That's twice he started him on the bench in big games. Is, is Madison going to be an impact player? Is his hip still not right? Or is he not 100%? And when I do actually say that, when Madison comes on with Tillemans, he drags Tillemans down. Tillemans is the finished product. Tillemans is the future of Leicester City. You've got Ndidi working, battling. You've got Soyuncu, Evans at the back, Albrighton running his heart out. They give absolutely everything. And now it's time for Madison to do the same. I want Madison to be the best player at Leicester. As the game went on, Schmeichel made a couple of excellent saves. He tipped one onto the post. And then he did a flying Superman save to his left. That save alone was good enough to win the FA Cup. Because 
of what it produced. It absolutely upped the team. It was amazing. And he just, like his dad, he's got goalkeeping in his DNA. Outstanding save. Vardy, working hard, pushing it, hassling, didn't score. But his work rate's second to none. Ian Acho, he's trying, battling all the fucking time. Perez upped his game yesterday, wasn't anything special. But he put his body on the line, he was trying. And this is what fans want. This is why Chelsea failed, because they didn't battle. They didn't put the bodies on the line. VAR, I'm not a fan of it. I don't think Leicester's goal should have been wiped off for the handball. It hit his knee and it just rebounded up onto his hand. Yeah, it was handball, but you've got to take into account accidental. So, fair enough. It was a goal. I can't moan. You've seen them given. You've seen them not given. Chelsea goal. Roy said he weren't offside. The little yellow line said he was. That's all there is to it. The little yellow line says it is. It's offside. Personally, I think this is where VAR goes wrong because in my book, he wasn't offside. He timed his run perfectly, but it's Ben Chilwell. Fuck you, Ben. All of a sudden, you want to start playing football for a club. The last six months of your career at Leicester, you didn't want to fucking play for us. Thought you were something fucking special. Never mind, son. Hey. So as it goes now, that's me uh, for Fox's sake on the cup final. I thank Brian, Elliot, Lawrence and the lads for having me on the kickoff. Made my day. Thoroughly made my day. To go down there and have my first victory on the kickoff. Brilliant. Absolutely loved it. I do feel sorry for Rory because Rory is a passionate fan for Chelsea. There's a lot of passionate fans for Chelsea. It's just a shame that the players didn't show that passion. And Thomas Tuchel didn't play, show it either. He's right. Rory are right. They should have played Abraham. They should have had at least him, had him on the bench. He scores fucking goals. Can't score goals sitting in the fucking stands in his suit, can he? So I do feel sorry for Chelsea. And I do feel sorry for, I feel sorry for the Chelsea fans. Because I don't think the team did them any favours. I don't think they did them any, any justice at all. It's a lot of money to go to, Chelsea, uh, to Wembley to watch that. So there it is, Leicester's won the FA Cup. Silverware will hopefully attract players to Leicester City. They will strengthen their squad. Rodgers is building for the future. Rodgers has got a plan with top. This ain't finishing. This Leicester team is not finishing now. This ain't going to be something like where uh, Uwe Watford who played in a final and got absolutely battered and disappeared. Leicester are building. You talk of the top six. You're going to have to seriously consider Leicester City in the top six. Don't fucking doubt the Foxes. They never quit. They're fucking coming. They're fucking coming. We've won the Premier League once before. Klopp took a few years to build Leicester into, uh, to build Liverpool into the team they were. Brendan Rodgers is doing the same. He's putting the planning permission in. He's putting the foundations. He's putting the fucking living room and the kitchen in. Then it's going to be the bedrooms. Then it's going to be the roof. And at the top is top. I hope you've enjoyed this for fuck's sake, to be fair. It's been a little bit different for me. I've been a little bit more serious. I think we're coming. I think Leicester City have got a bright future. We've got money, we've got a ground, we've got no debt, and we've got an 80 million pound fucking training centre. We've got an excellent fucking youth system. Recruiting agencies, absolutely top, door, top draw. We're not fucking about. Leicester are not fucking about. They're fucking coming. <laughs>